Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Caleb. Um, I haven't made a video in a while. I've been super busy, unfortunately, but I wanted to do an update on my garden I've got going on. My little uh, coronavirus victory garden. Really, I mean, it's just a garden like I did last year, but a little bit bigger. Um, just seemed like a good idea to maybe uh, grow some extra food. But So I've got gardens in a couple portions. We actually added in some in-ground stuff over there that we'll go check out in a few. But uh, this is the patio part of it with my containers. One thing I was really not good at this year was labeling stuff. Um, I did get a bunch of onion sets that I'm just kind of experimenting with those. See how they come up uh, in containers versus in the ground. Um, one thing I will link down to below that were really nice and affordable are these felt pots. They're way lighter than like your traditional, you know, clay or even the plastic pots. Um, I think these ones are seven gallons. Then I've got some one gallon ones too. The one gallon ones, probably a little too small for what I'm looking to do. But uh, yeah, got some onions there. I went big on my tomatoes. Um, <clears throat> so I got a bunch of varieties. Some of them from Tagawa Gardens. Uh, this is one of my black cherry tomatoes. Those are great when they start coming in. I really like those. So I got two of those this year. Um, a couple random squash plants, I'm not sure. With the squash and stuff, I'm really not sure exactly what I planted where, so I'm just gonna have to wait till they start fruiting to uh, to find out, but they're doing pretty good. That was a store-bought rosemary plant that's doing really nicely. Um, hoping maybe if I can get that big enough, I'll give it a permanent spot outside. <clears throat> More tomatoes and onions. This is a little uh, blend of kale from uh, <clears throat> I think Botanical Interest makes that blend, but it's got green and that's uh, some red Russian kale there. These guys are kohlrabi, which I think I probably planted way too many of them. Kohlrabi um, makes kind of a big bowl that you kind of eat like a potato or a turnip, but you can eat the greens as well. Uh, this is garlic, a little bit of Thai basil in there. And I think this is a bean plant. It's kind of hanging on for dear life. I experimented with some of my tomato plants by putting wood chips in there. Um, I don't think the experiment worked out too well. This was actually, this pot was also growing like tatsoi, which is kind of like a Asian spinach. But for whatever reason, the two pots that I have the, uh, the wood chips in, the tomatoes just seem to be yellowing out like that one. You can see he's not doing too good. So I don't know if it had to do with the wood chips or what, but I've tried to kind of remove those from that pot and seems like it's doing a little better than it was, but we'll see. I might have to troubleshoot that one. Uh, these tomatoes I'm actually really proud of because um, I grew these from seed. And again, you know, wasn't smart enough to label, so they're going to be mysteries, but a couple pepper plants that I grew from seed jalapeno plant I actually purchased that but that one's been doing pretty good and it's producing a good amount of uh, jalapenos so that's fun and then yeah there's that other uh, yellowish tomato plant so again I'm not really sure what the diagnosis is on those but I'm gonna try to uh, try to figure it out but the rest of them seem to be doing really well um, again, like I said, it's a mix of stuff that I bought, like tomato starts, like this guy was a start, but he's probably my most vigorous plant. And then um, these littler guys, they were from seed, but you know, I bought a, um, like a little LED grow light and that really made all the difference for seed starting. Um, so I highly recommend that unless you have a really sunny window. So that's the patio, um, mostly tomatoes little bit of squash here and there so I'm hoping to have a, a butt ton of tomatoes and then this little bag of actually growing a um, this is like a giant pumpkin I forget what it's called the Atlantic giant so he looks like he's doing pretty happy but I might have to move him around anyway and just got a little corn growing with them so that's the well and then I guess I got these guys on the table so I'm keeping most of my peppers so this was tat soy, but it went to seed, as you can see. So, pro 
probably need to harvest these and just kind of be done with them. Some basil, some peas. So yeah, that's the patio part. So let's go. Uh, let's go check out the uh, the in ground stuff. So we just kind of dug out like a little space next to the mulching. Um, my mom's got horses, so we kind of just used an uh, old horse fertilizer to uh, fertilize this. And then what we did for the path initially, I actually had old um, old roofing shingles in this uh, T-shaped path here, and um, that really helped compact the ground down, but. I wasn't, you know, the chemicals in the shingles probably isn't great, so we just went and got some mulch and mulched that in. And that actually works pretty well because it kind of keeps um, keeps a lot of moisture in around here. But um, you know, tragically, these first two rows on either side were doing really well, and it was Swiss chard. But some somebody, I believe a deer, managed to get in here last night. So what I did today was go get some. Uh, some uh, mountain lion urine and a couple other repellents for deer but uh, you know live and learn because obviously you can see this fence here is only a couple feet high easy for them to jump over so I'm gonna have to keep them out a different way but let's see what we got here uh, a lot of these are my greens over here I said that was Swiss chard in this row uh, this is more of that tat soy stuff the deer didn't seem to touch that last night um, I believe mustard greens and there was some spinach in here I don't seem to do well with spinach because it seems to go to seed really quickly um, you can see there it's kind of bolted um, these mustard greens are really good though so I'm probably gonna pull these plants and just collect all the leaves and uh, eat those over next week and then there's kale actually growing in here some of that same kale mix and then these are turnips, but I didn't really plant the turnips too well because they're not really creating the bulb like they should. And we got some onions. Carrots are starting to come up here. Uh, these are beets, which are starting to pop, but they're not really doing that good. Um, I did get a lot of radishes. This one's going to seed as well. So I do need to clean out some of these rows. Um, and then most of this other side I'm doing uh, basically like a three sisters garden. And that consists of corn, uh, squash plants, and bean plants. And they're supposed to work, those three crops are supposed to work synergistically together. Um, this little guy is one of those deer repellent things I just put in. So we'll see how that works. Hopefully it'll keep them out of there. But the corn's doing really well. Um, pretty surprised with that so far. So I've grown it in the past in containers mostly and it didn't really um didn't do what I wanted it to do but the squash and zucchinis took forever to start popping but they're just everywhere now so I am gonna be hopefully up to my eyeballs in squash if the deer uh, stay away then over here I believe these guys are um, I think that's uh, Romanesco broccoli and if you've never seen Romanesco, check that out because it's pretty cool looking. That might just be a cabbage. But uh, yeah, mostly beans, squash, that kind of stuff. And then I've got one lone tomato hanging out in the container. These are actually potatoes. Um, I watched a different video with a technique of you put some cardboard down, some soil, and then wood chips. Plant the potatoes down underneath the wood chips. They grow out seems to be working so far so I'm hoping I'll have a good potato year and then over here just more of the squash and bean scene and kind of over on the side we're actually doing the, um, those are pumpkins so I'm hoping get a couple jack-o'-lanterns out of it this year it'd be nice um, as you can see it's not really well weeded um, using that horse manure it's it's good soil but it's got a ton of seeds in it because obviously it's got everything that the horses ate so we'll see um, I did kind of a little like ghetto trellis system with some bamboo sticks here for my peas but the peas are doing really good and they do uh, nicely grab onto those bamboo stakes so I've been pleased with that um, it's kind of amazing how they uh, how they know how to like grab onto stuff like that and uh, these are more turnips 
I did another row of beets here. I'm not, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the soil, but the beets aren't really popping this year. So maybe next year. And then I've got a couple rows of cucumbers there. So and then these two mounds, I think I put like acorn squash in there. And then really this is just more beans over here. A couple more cabbages, that kind of stuff. And then I'm doing, I'm just kind of experimenting with the potatoes and the containers. Uh, those are actually old like cat litter uh, plastic boxes. Um, so I just wash those out, put some holes in the bottom. But uh, you know the potatoes pop up real nice. They, uh, they had no problem coming out and they push those wood chips out of the way pretty easily. Uh, those are peppers I started from seed. I've they're kind of starting to grow, but they've kind of been they've been slow to take off since I transplanted them into those. Um, and then these are kind of the remaining peppers that I grew from seed. So it kind of what I've noticed is it takes them a week or two to really kind of acclimate to the new um, the new environment that they're in. And really, man, I really wish I would have uh, really wish I would have filmed this yesterday because these Swiss chard plants were just popping and. I think it was a deer, but he just made mince meat out of them. Luckily, he didn't eat them all the way down, so I'm sure they'll grow back. But it really is a kind of a tragedy. But at least the deer got a good dinner, I guess. And an asshole, but whatever. And then I've got some more potatoes growing in here. And then I will show you one more thing, which is my little potato patch that I put over there. Yeah, actually, I'll show you this little thing. It was just a piece of kind of junk frame that we had. So I converted that into like a little bedding space and I just did onions in there. So those are doing okay. It's kind of in the shade, so I don't know how we'll do. But they seem to be growing all right. But this year, just a lot of experimenting and uh, seeing what I can do and what grows best in what situations. And then we turned our old... Um, our old garbage can here you can see we put a bunch of holes in it so that's actually acting as a composting bin so it seems like it's doing well it doesn't stink or anything so I think it's uh, aerating well but um, this is what I learned off another gentleman uh, Taryn Lupo off of his YouTube channel kind of like a lazy survival garden kind of thing and so what you're looking at here is um you know, I laid down cardboard underneath this that'll kind of help kill off the grass over the next year. And then a couple, did probably four inches of the uh, horse manure soil. And then probably another six to ten inches of the wood chips. Um, so I put the soil down, then I planted my seed potatoes and waited. Um, actually, some of these I started inside, so they were already kind of maturing as plants before I put them in. And some of them were just put in as potatoes. So the idea here, the wood chips are supposed to act like a um, kind of a sponge. So you don't need to water this very often, which is nice. Um, I probably only water it like once a week, or if there's a heavy rainstorm, you don't really even need to touch it. But the uh, if you've ever grown potatoes, they grow upwards. Um, so instead of growing into soil, they'll just grow into these wood chips and we really don't touch this till kind of the end of the summer maybe into the early fall because so i think it takes them about five months but probably have like 30 or so plants in there and then for defending this we've got this crude wooden barrier that we made out of like dead wood but what i also did here um i got a couple t posts and i'm assuming you can see this on the camera but this is just fishing line like 30 pound fishing line so just wrap that around and it seems like it's kept deer out pretty well I did notice uh, yesterday I think our same same deer that was um, attacking the uh, the Swiss chard in there he tried to get in here but I think the uh, fishing line kind of scared him off so that's the idea and I did also get another one of those Atlantic giant pumpkins in here he's doing really well so I'm hoping I'll get some big ass pumpkins. That'd be kind of fun. Um, and then again, I put in one of these repellent things. So I got these, um, which have some sort of scent repellent in them. They just sit there. And they also sell 
at the garden center they sell like predator urine so I've bought a um, you can buy a jar of mountain lion piss um, and man it's it smells so I uh, I did pop that around on kind of like the corners outside the garden there so hopefully that'll be enough to deter them but uh, yes yeah, so that's the garden so far guys um, I'm hoping hoping I have a good harvest the, this year and um, you know I think everybody should at least try their hand at growing some food this year just to you know even if uh, you don't have a ton of space it's a good hobby um, this has kept me busy throughout the whole lockdown thing and uh, it's just fun and you get to eat stuff at the end of it which is cool so anyway thank you guys for watching thanks for checking out my garden and I will try to do some more uh, more regular updates on this so all right, cheers. Talk to you soon.